All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Zenfolio Live. I'm Robert with Zenfolio Customer Success, and I want to say thank you for joining us on the live stream today, where we're going to be talking about five things to help you increase the traffic to your website. So today, today we're going to be going through and talking about website titles and descriptions, group, gallery, and image titles, captions for those images and galleries, keywords and categories, and then we're going to jump into some gallery customization, showing you how to make sure that those options are turned on so that they are visible to search engines and they can help you. Hey, if this is your first time hanging out with us today, or if you're just coming back week after week, we love you guys who come back week after week, but we also love you guys who hang out with us for the first time. Make sure you say hi to us in the chat. Let us know where you're from. I was getting some really crazy thunderstorms about 20 minutes ago, but they've kind of calmed down, hoping that that stays that way for the remainder of at least the next hour, right? I don't want any uh, sudden power outages or anything like that, but if I all of a sudden disappear, then um, that's probably because the storms are back and my power went out. But hey, the whole reason that we're doing this Zenfolio Live today is because, I don't know if you guys know, but every Tuesday we do site reviews at the same time. So if you haven't checked out Site Review Tuesday yet, definitely join us on Tuesday for site reviews. But every single Tuesday we review three websites. And one of the things that I am constantly talking about and pointing out is the lack of SEO stuff on people's websites, such as the title and description the gallery captions and all of that good stuff. So that is one of the reasons, the main reasons why we're doing this in Folio Live today. Um, all right, uh, as always hanging out with me, uh, I've got Richard taking care of you guys in chat. Make sure you show him some love. I appreciate him jumping on here on Thursdays and helping me take care of you guys um, there in the chat. We've got some announcements really quick. Uh, let's see. First of all, we've been talking about it. It's still going. The Ultimate Photographer Starter Package Sweepstakes is still going on. You can still enter it. The link to do that is in the description below this video. So if you're watching this right now and you haven't entered that, click that link and go ahead and get yourself entered. There are some really, really, really cool stuff that we're giving away in that sweepstakes, including like a $250 I think it's a $250 B&H uh, gift, gift certificate. Lots of really cool stuff. So if you haven't entered yet, do yourself a favor and enter that. Also, you guys, we've been talking about Book Me a whole lot here on Zenfolio Live. And guess what? We're going to talk about it some more. There are some new features coming out. Can't tell you what yet. But if you want to tune in next week, I may have a special guest back on Zenfolio Live with me today. Or next week, not today, back on Zenfolio Live next week to tell you about those special, uh, those new features coming for BookMe. Also, don't forget the group training sessions. We are still doing those. We're still doing those. Uh, you can sign up for those in the description below the video as well. We're covering uh, BookMe, where it's basic selling and advanced selling sessions. So make sure that you click on those and sign up. And then don't forget, as always, guys, we can continue us to we continue to challenge you guys to post positive things on your social media uh, every day just to make sure that we're putting some positivity out there in the world that's photographers. So make sure that you're posting images, putting some positive vibes out there. And while you're doing that, go ahead and tag those images with the hashtag Zenfolio Photographers for a chance for those photos to be featured on uh, our social media platform. So make sure that you're using that hashtag when you're posting those out. Okay, um, let's see who we got hanging out with us in chat. So I'm going to say hi to Larry, Roxanne Bay back with us, uh, Marietta, and Lynn already chatting with us. So hey guys, thanks for jumping on here and, and joining us. And hey guys, as I go through this training, if you have any questions at all, um, even if it's totally off the topic, make sure that you get those in chat because once we figure, finish up this training, we are going to be taking your guys' questions live. So make sure that you get those questions in the chat to Richard. He's going to pass them off to me and we will be answering those. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, just jump into today's topic. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is website title and description. Okay. And so the reason that this is a really important thing to know about is because this is a setting that when we create our Zenfolio account, most of the time we're kind of in a rush. We're creating this. This is a setting that we actually set up at the very beginning of creating our Zenfolio account. And then nine out of 10 of us forget to go back 
and add more information into this setting, but it's so, so important that you do this. So I'm gonna show you where this is. This is your website title and description. I'm gonna show you how to get there, and then we're gonna talk about the type of information that you might want to put in that title and description. So the setting that I'm talking about, you're gonna hover over your name up here in the top right corner, and you're gonna click on account, and then um, you're gonna go down here to search or to website and let me get myself out of the way here you're going to go down here to website click on website in the bottom left corner and then you're going to click on search engine optimization right here and you're going to see where it says homepage title and website description Okay, and you see the little green SEO tags right here? This is just our way of letting you know, hey, these sections are important for you for your SEO, your search engine optimization. And we've actually put in some nice SEO tips up here. And if you wanna learn more about SEO while you're doing this, you can actually click on here and that will take you to a really cool uh, support article that really deep dives into SEO and all the different things that you can do. But right now we're talking about the homepage title and the website description. And so this homepage title, that's also the title that you see. And let me just kind of open this up so you guys can see this really quick. You'll hear me talk about this a lot on Zenfolio, or not Zenfolio Live, but Site Review Tuesday. That website title is what shows up here, right? And that's not the important part about it. The important part about your website title is that when you go to Google and you do a search for photographers or whatever you're searching for, okay, this is also the website title. And so that's the important part about it, okay? If we scroll down here, this is the website title. This is the website title. That's the website title right there. And so just going back to your Zenfolio account, and I always point it out on Site Review Tuesday from the little tab up here, but really it's important because of the search, the search use that, it, that it's for. So when you think about that, and you think about when you do searches on Google, think about the titles that you see, right? They don't just, a lot of times they're not just really short little titles, they have kind of some information in that title. And so you wanna do the same thing with your title as well. So having your business name here, but then maybe just putting a little tab or a tube or however you wanna do a separation, and then you could put uh, Raleigh NC Wedding and uh, Portrait photographer okay and so just adding that little bit of extra information in your homepage title think about how that's going to change how those search results look to visitors right so now all of a sudden instead of just seeing Zenfolio live photography they're seeing Zenfolio live photography Raleigh North Carolina wedding and portrait photographer and so they know the type of photography I do the location that I do it in but also Search engines know that information now too because it's in that website title and it's gonna help you rank uh, better because you have more information in your website title. Now, the website description, the next section right down here is kind of the same thing. It's not the title, it's not the same as the title, but the website description on Google is this right here. And so you can see in here that when I searched for photographers, and let me just pull this down, when I searched for photographers, the search results, wrong way, the search results, um, they highlighted the website descriptions that also mentioned a photographer. They highlighted or bolded that word photographer in there. So you wanna think about what your target client is gonna be searching for to find you, what terms are they gonna be using? Are, they, are you a real estate photographer? Are they gonna be searching for real estate photographers in Johnston County, real estate photographers in Connecticut, real estate photographers in Boston, right? The terms that you want to use for people to lead you, lead them to you through search, that's the information that you wanna have down here as well. Okay, now keep, you can put a lot of information in here. You do not want to just drop a bunch of keywords in here and make this nonsense. Because keep in mind, people are actually gonna be able to read this on the search results. And so this needs to make sense to you or I if I was reading this, okay? So this isn't just uh, a place where you can drop a bunch of keywords like you would drop money off in a bank or something like that. This is where you need to be very strategic. You need to write a sentence out, again, 
What I challenge you to do is go do some searches, look at the search results that are appearing up top after you kind of get past the paid ads, look at the organic search um, search terms that are appearing up at the top, look how their website descriptions are written out, and then use that information to think about how you should maybe phrase your website description down here. Okay, so that's number one. Once you have that information updated with a lot more information than I have here, you would just kind of save this Okay, and then the next thing that we're gonna talk about is we're gonna talk about your group, gallery, and image titles, okay? So we're gonna jump in to photos right up here really quick. And really, I'm only gonna talk about these in my public facing stuff. So if you have client galleries that you keep on lockdown that you don't allow to be searchable, none of this stuff really applies that I'm about to show you. But any gallery that you have set up that's public, that's searchable, and I'm gonna show you really quick how to make sure that that is the case. Um, you wanna think about the way that you're titling those galleries and the way that you're titling those groups, your images and all of that stuff. So when I go to my portfolio right here, so first of all, let me show you how to make sure that it is public and searchable. So if I click on portfolio and my internet is kind of bogging down one second, you guys, let me just do a refresh and see if that speeds it up. So let me go to portfolio. And then on portfolio, what we're going to do is we're going to go um, over here to access really quick. And then I just want again, I just want to make this public because this is my portfolio. This is public facing. I want it to be found in search results. Um, I want this to show up. I want it to be easily found. OK, so I want it to be public. And then I want to come down to the um, search settings right here and I would want to make sure that this is set to allow content to be publicly searchable. Okay, this is um, my demo account. So a lot of times that some of the stuff that I keep in here, I kind of turn off to be found searchable. But this is what if this was my actual Zenfolio account, I would want to make sure that my portfolio, my public facing galleries are allowed to be publicly searchable. That's what allows Google and search engines to find them, to index them and start showing them in search results. So we would save that. OK, and then again, we're really talking about the group gallery and title. So this just says portfolio. Whenever we create content in here, a lot of times we just think about um, for our own organization. Right. So this is my portfolio. So I just put portfolio as the title. But these titles on this side matter. OK, they matter because the titles can help your SEO. And so you could have just portfolio, but maybe you want to rename it to have a little bit more information like uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, wedding and portrait, port photography portfolio or something like that. OK, so just thinking about the way you title these on this end, at least for your public facing galleries, these titles do matter. OK, and if I go in here, um, you can see I've kind of done the same thing to this wedding portrait portfolio here. So just clicking on that really quick. I've not just named it weddings. I know we do that a lot for organization, but again, these titles do matter. So clicking on that gallery and actually renaming it something with a little bit more keyword information in there is going to be really helpful as well. So think about that. And then all the way down to your images inside of that gallery. So when we look at these images over here, um, you can see that some of these have really meaningless titles that are like my file names. OK, and that's fine. I would definitely leave your client gallery titles to be your file names. That's going to help you reference them later if you need to. But for your public facing portfolio galleries, think about the way that you're titling your images. Again, these titles matter. So this says outdoor bride and groom portrait. Maybe this would be like bride and groom getting ready for wedding portrait. Different things like that that you could put in the title that would again help this be a little bit more searchable. So think about that stuff for your portfolios. Again, I would recommend leaving your client galleries to set to show your file names. But for your um, portfolio galleries, your images, go in there and give them titles that are searchable, not just DSCs dash or underscore zero zero two. OK, um, all right, we're going to keep going. The next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about your captions. OK, so 
You can add captions to groups, to galleries, and even to your images. All right, and captions are really powerful stuff, you guys. They let you put text in there. You can talk about stuff. You can put links. You can put calls to actions. In my opinion, captions are probably one of the most underutilized feature here on Zenfolio as far as helping your SEO. And so I'm going to show you how to do captions really quick. We're going to go to, we'll start off on the group. And guys, as I'm going through this, please, if you have questions, make sure you get them in the chat uh, so I can get those answered for you today, whether they're on the topic that we're talking about today or completely off the topic. Get those in the chat. We welcome all those questions and we will get those answered live as best we can today. All right. So I'm going to click on the group first for my portfolio and then I'm going to go to details. And you can see right here, I have the name. And then under here, I have some lorem ipsum for the caption. Okay, now the caption is a place where you can write a little bit more information about you. So on your main portfolio folder, maybe you would just write a quick caption that says, you know, I'm a uh, Raleigh, North Carolina wedding and portrait photographer. Um, I love doing weddings because of blah, blah, blah. Some of my favorite venues to shoot weddings are this and that and this and that. Um, and I also like doing portrait sessions at this park and, and different things like that. So you're putting information in there that people might search for, right? Especially specific location information is really helpful. Um, so putting that information in there and then you can actually do something that's really powerful here You can use the link tool. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in here a little really quick so you guys can see this There is a link tool right here And so in your captions and I'm going to show you where this stuff shows up But in your caption you could say something like uh, and I'm just going to type something really quick. I am a wedding photographer my favorite place to shoot weddings is the uh, Raleigh, we'll do the Raleigh Rose Garden, okay? Now, what you can do is in that caption, especially if you're linking or if you're talking about specific locations, you can go ahead and highlight that text like this and you can turn that text into a link okay so there's a link tool i've clicked it right here so what i'm going to do really quick is just hop back over to google and find the raleigh rose garden website really quick okay so looks like it is i guess we're just going to use this for now i'm going to copy that link jump back over to my zenfolio account i'm going to paste that url in here and i'm going to really importantly set it to open in a new tab. I don't want to take people all the way from my Zenfolio site, but I want to link to that. Now, why do I want to link to that? Because when I set this up, I'm going to contact those venues that I'm linking to. And I'm going to say, hey, my name is Robert. I'm a, a, a wedding photographer here in Raleigh. And, uh, you know, I have a website up. I get I get a fair amount of traffic. And I've actually linked to your guys' pages because I have a lot of brides and grooms coming through looking at venues and things like that. And so I've actually linked to your guys' site. Here's the link where I actually link to your site so you guys can see it. Would you mind giving me a link back from your website? And that is really, really helpful. Those link backs from external websites, anytime Google sees things that's linking to your website, they consider it very, very relevant. And so that's something that you can use to help you get those link backs from those other venues. And not only that, but now you're kind of using your site as a way to offer value to your potential clients by also mentioning different venues that maybe they haven't considered for their wedding or for whatever reason. I know I'm talking about wedding and portraits a lot. You guys, this can, this same fundamentals can be applied to any type of photography that you do. Some of my favorite places to shoot landscapes are, some of my favorite national parks are. So these can be applied to any type of photography that you do. Um, okay, so now that we've done that caption on the group, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna do the exact same kind of thing to the galleries in there. So if I go to that Raleigh wedding photography and portfolio there, and we go to details, you're gonna do the same thing down there in the gallery as well, okay? So you're gonna do it on the group level, and then you would do it down on the gallery level as well. And apparently, I did that earlier. Um, so doing that caption on the gallery level as well, 
And then if you want to, you can go to an individual image and go to details and actually write up a caption for that individual image. And you can link to different places there as well. So if you have specific photos, maybe on those photos, you could say this photo was shot at X, Y, and Z, or this photo was shot here, photo taken here. Um, and so that way, um, that information is there. And again, you can leverage that to use those different venues to give you um, link backs. Okay, so that's really important that you have that stuff set up in there. It's gonna really help drive traffic to your site. Now, the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is keywords and categories, okay? Now you can do keywords and categories on your galleries and your images. You can't do them on the groups, but you can do them on the galleries and your images. And so what we'll do really quick is we'll just kind of go to the gallery first and we'll go down here, click on that gallery. We'll go to details and then you can see right down here are keywords. Okay, and let me just zoom in here really quick. So what I recommend doing, and if you're just getting started doing this, um, this is what I would recommend that you do. Think of three keywords and three keyword phrases that you could apply to each of your portfolio galleries that you have set up. So start off with three keywords and three keyword phrases per portfolio gallery that you have get those in there and then after that later on if you want to come back and add more you can i would try to keep it at around 15 maximum but you definitely want to mix it up now what do i mean by keywords and keyword phrases well a keyword is this wedding comma bride comma groom those are single words they're keywords a keyword phrase is uh, something like Raleigh NC wedding photographer. Okay. And punctuation really doesn't matter on that. I just, that was just a habit. But you see what I did? I enclosed that phrase with quotation marks right here to tell the search engines that this is a phrase. Okay. And, and so what I would challenge you to do again is to come up with three single keywords and three keyword phrases that you could apply to your galleries. Now, after that, you're going to drop down to this next section that Zenfolio has for you called the category section. And you can choose from a big list of categories here. Well, not a big list, but a list of categories here. Once you make that selection, you can then go down and choose some subcategories. Now, after you have that set up, go ahead and save it. So now that we've done that on the, um, the, uh, the gallery level, the next thing that you want to do is you want to do that on the image level. Now, the easiest way to do this, and guys, if you only take one big thing away from this, aside from just the SEO aspect, if you're using um, Lightroom and you're not keywording in Lightroom, please start keywording in Lightroom. Um, look at how to do um, smart collections in Lightroom based on keywords and start keywording in Lightroom and then make sure that your export settings are set to include the um, the keywords and the all the metadata when you export your photos from Lightroom. So please look into learning how to do that keywording in Lightroom. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to help you build a better image library and it's just going to be a lot more beneficial doing it on that end than having to come in here and do it on the Zenfolio side. It's going to be a lot easier. Okay. Um, hey, Mr. Jeff Cable, thanks for jumping on and hanging out with us today on Zenfolio Live. Let me say hi to some more of you guys in chat there. We've got um, Mary Etta, Roxanne Bay hanging out with us, Jennifer. Uh, I think we had 410 Aerial Photography back with us again. Good to see you again, my friend. Let's see who else. And Lynn and all of you guys who hang out with us week after week. You guys are awesome. Okay, um, yeah, as Roxanne Bay is saying, she loves uh, keywording in Lightroom. It's it's super important, you guys. Okay, back to image keywording though, okay? So when you're ready to do your images, if you haven't keyworded them in Lightroom, you can do this in Zenfolio. Now it's not the way that I recommend, but it is possible. And if you're going to do it in Zenfolio, here is how I recommend doing it. You don't wanna blanket keyword all of these images with the same thing. 
One thing that you need to understand is that when Google sees a page with a bunch of repeated keywords over and over again, they think that you're trying to cheat the system and they will actually penalize you for it. So you do not want to just blanket these images with the same repeated keyword over and over again. What you want to do is you want to strategically select some images to keyword at the same time that might be similar. Okay, because nobody wants to go through and keyword every single image at the same time. And so what you might think about doing is saying, okay, let me go in here really quick. And uh, let's see, this is a bride portrait. So I'm going to click on that one. Uh, let me hold command on my keyboard or control if you're on a PC. Let me click on this one. And then we'll go down to, uh, we'll say that this is just the bride because mainly it is the bride in focus. So I'm holding command, clicking on that one. As you guys can see, I have three images selected here. And we'll go with this one right here. So I have, how many images is that that I have selected? Four selected. With those selected, I can go to details and guess what? I'm now keywording those four photos at the same time. Now it's important to note that if you already have keywords in those images, this method will not append any new keywords that you add to it. It will actually erase any information that you have there and replace it. But now I'm keywording those four images at the same time. So now I can come in here and say bride or uh, do quotations and do a bridal portrait like this. Okay. And so you're just going to want to go through strategically select your images, holding command or control, depending on if you're on a Mac or PC and diversify your keywords and spread them across those images. Okay. Really think about that. Don't come in here and select all of your images and just blanket those with the same keyword. Now, before I jump to my next point, where is a good place to figure out what kind of keyword you want to use? Google Trends, you guys, at Google Trends. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Google Trends, just do a quick search. And let me bring this down. So I'm literally just going to my bar, typing in Google Trends, okay? And clicking on Google Trends right here. When you're trying to figure out what keywords you want to use, Google Trends will let you explore the search volume on that. So if I wanted to say bridal portraits as maybe, and I might want to spell it right, bridal portraits is maybe one of my keywords. If maybe I'm thinking about that, but I'm like, you know what? I wonder if bride portraits search is better. I could compare these two. And it would, obviously, it's going to show me that bridal portraits is much more searchable. So I know, okay, bride portraits is a no-go for me. That's not a keyword I want to consider. And so when you're teeter-tottering back on these different things and you really want to know what keywords are going to provide you the most value, you can use Google Trends to find that information out. Now, there's a lot to explore on Google Trends. You can target specific states. So this is the whole United States, but maybe I wanted to target a specific state. I could. Um, I could also target a specific timeline, uh, lots of different things in here. So really, really useful information in here. If you haven't checked out Google Trends, it will really help you when you're trying to develop your keywords and different things like that. Okay. Okay. So, so far we've talked about the website title, the description. We've went in, we've talked about the titles of the galleries, the groups, the images. We've talked about keywords, categories, all of that good stuff. Okay. The last thing that we want to talk about is your gallery settings and gallery customization. Making sure that um, you have this stuff set up to show because this information, in order for Google to take it as relevant information, is in order for Google to actually say, okay, these keywords and stuff, I see them, and it's relevant information, so I'm going to rank this site better. In order for that to happen, they have to be visible to actual visitors to see them. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that this information is showing on your site. So you're going to go to a gallery, or maybe you want to start off at a group because you want to make sure that the group caption is showing. So you're going to click on here, and we're going to right-click on Preview and just open that in a new tab. Okay, I'm going to jump over to this new tab really quick. And on this new tab, I'm just going to hit the edit button and edit page. Now, this is my demo account. It's probably going to be pretty hideous. Don't judge me on it. Uh, I tried to break it and do different crazy things to it, but this is what you want to do. So first of all, 
once you're in customized view, you want to go up to options. Okay, once you're in options, uncheck that use default and on your group page, you want to make sure that your caption is set to show. That way that text caption shows up there. You want to make sure that that's showing. Once you have that done, go ahead and hit apply. Okay, and then that's going to put that caption up here in the top. Now again, this is a demo account. I have a really bad theme apparently applied to it and you can barely see the text. All that's changeable in Theme Designer. Um, but here's that link, right? So now I could send this to the Raleigh Rose Garden and say, hey, I'm a photographer. I'm linking to you guys. Do you guys want to link back to me? Kind of thing, okay? Now, the next thing that we want to do is um, save this as default. Okay, save it as default. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump into the uh, the gallery. So we're gonna go down to that Raleigh wedding gallery down here. Let me get myself out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing. We're gonna go to the gallery. I'm gonna right click on preview, open that in a new tab. This is why I do this, because it's so much faster to jump back and forth through these different tabs. And then what I'm gonna do is go to edit, edit page. Man, that's a really bad theme. I need to get in there and fix this theme. Um, we're gonna go to edit page. We're gonna go up to options, uncheck use default. We're gonna go to page elements. We're gonna make sure that the caption is set to show. We're gonna make sure that the categories and keywords are set to show right here, okay? And then we're gonna come down and apply that so that all of that stuff is showing so that Google sees it as relevant information. So. Now, when it comes to your gallery defaults, what I would recommend is that if you want that stuff to show in client galleries, then go ahead and save this as default. But if you don't want the caption or the keywords to show in your client galleries, then I would not save it as default because you wanna save your default setting to be used for the galleries that you're gonna have the majority of. What I mean is that hopefully you have more client galleries than you have portfolio galleries. And so you wanna save that default setting to be used for your client galleries. That way you can just go in and individually edit your you know, handful of portfolio galleries that you have. Okay, but here's the caption. And again, ignore this theme. It's a really bad demo theme that I apparently have on here. Here's that link. Then if I scroll down to the very bottom, we know that on Zenfolio here, we are all about photographers. And as a photographer, the last thing that I want cluttered all over my images website is a bunch of keywords. And so the keywords are actually hidden down here, nice and out of the way. And so the last thing I'm gonna do is just publish those changes, make sure that those changes get published. And now we've updated all of that information and that's gonna help us get more traffic to our site. All right, you guys, uh, I didn't mean to go so long. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back and I'll start answering your guys' questions. So if you have questions, 27 minutes, I can answer a lot of questions in 27 minutes. Get them in the chat and I'll be right back. Hey guys, my name is Richard with Zenfolio Customer Success. Once again, happy Thursday. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope you're getting some really good tips and tricks on how to improve traffic to your site. And I have my dog walking under me right now, as you can see his tail. <laughs> but regardless, I appreciate you all who are here joining us. Um, if you haven't had a chance to put any questions in the chat that you have, definitely do that. That's what we're here for. 
Um, so we'd be happy to help you with that. And also, if you are watching the recorded version of this, you can absolutely ask questions as well. Um, just let us know within the, um, the link down below. You can click it. It's titled Email Questions for Next Week. Click that link, uh, ask some questions, and we'd be happy to get to them, which is what Robert is going to do for you right now, as well as answer all of your live questions too. All right. Thanks, Richard. Let's see. I saw Mattel thrown in there. That made me laugh as a first camera. I think it's cool that they do the um, the giveaways, you guys. So that's awesome. I love to see our mods participating, giving you guys some account credits. It's a lot of fun. Um, just to read off some of the first, the first cameras here. So in Oliver started on a Nikon D90. That was my first DSLR in, uh, so really cool. Roxanne Bay said Kodad, uh, and then she corrected with Kodak. Um, when I first started getting into photography, before I decided just to go out and buy the most expensive camera that the PX had at the time, uh, I was shooting on a little like metallic red Kodak point and shoot. My wife and I were exploring some abandoned buildings and we were doing photos on that. And then when I was like, oh, we got some cool pictures, but the camera's kind of crappy. Didn't know anything about cameras, and went and bought a Nikon D90 just on a whim and have been a Nikon guy ever since. Let's see. Jeff Cable says a Pentax ME Super. Who else? What else we got here? A Canon AE program. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's see. Free Will Photos says a Nikon D5200. David Goose says a Fuji. Hey, so I want to ask Richard a question. I have never seen anybody with more cameras than Richard. So Richard, I want to know how many cameras you have in your collection. Throw it out in the chat. I want to see if anybody on our live chat audience can beat camera count with your collection camera count. So throw that number out in the chat. Let's see how many you have. All right, I'm going to get to your your guys' questions. If you have questions, we still have like 20 minutes, lots of time. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, Jennifer says, is it better for SEO if your image file names are similar to your image titles? Hey, that's a good question, Jennifer. I would say that it's probably okay. Uh, I don't know if it would be better or not since kind of the image title is what the search engines would be looking at really. Uh, but one thing that I didn't point out that is really good for your SEO is also your image alt tags. And so if you go in here really quick and you go to details, you also have an alt attribute right here, and you can set that to be the same as your title, or you can go in and rewrite it. And so as long as you're giving that image title a good title, you can set this the same as title, and that alt attribute um, will help out. All right, uh, Richard says he has 27 cameras. Nice, wow. Great question though, um, Jennifer, thanks for asking that one. Let's see, let me get the details closed out of the way here. There we go. Hit the little details button right there. And uh, let's grab another question. Uh, from Maria Thompson, she says, does Zenfolio provide any tools that makes sharing on social media easy? That's a great question. So you can go to um, right here to like a gallery and you guys can't see obviously because it's behind me. You can go right to a gallery. You can go up to actions and there is a uh, share button right here that you can click and then you can share to Facebook, to Twitter, to Pinterest, to all of that good stuff right here. Um, so you can do that. You can also copy the direct link right here as well. So that stuff is right in there. Again, that is under the actions menu and then going and clicking share. Uh, I also believe that it's possible to do the same thing on just an image as well. So if we go down here, click this, you can hit share and to share that out. Now, how does this work? It doesn't actually share the images out of your Zenfolio account. What that does is it will share your gallery link with a thumbnail image that will then link back to your website. So we're not actually exporting images out of your gallery or anything like that. Um, okay, so uh, let's see, great question. Next question from Mr. Lin, he says, very helpful information. Is there a limit on how long the keyword phrases can be? Um, so I don't know if there's a limit. I know that every SEO export will probably have a different answer. Google usually wants your keywords to be presented as um, a human readable format and not in a list. So you would probably want to keep it to, you know, to maybe two words, two to three words, something like that. All right. Uh, great question though, Lynn. Let's see, next question. 
from Jeff Cable. And just in case you guys didn't know, Jeff Cable photographs the Olympics. But Jeff Cable says, is keywording beneficial for SEOs even on private galleries? So the answer to that, Jeff, is no. If you have client galleries that are locked with a password or galleries that are set to private or they're not allowed to be searchable in any kind of way, then the keywords and the SEO and all of that stuff is not beneficial for those. Now, as photographers, we do kind of get in this habit of assuming that all of our clients want password protected private galleries, right? And sometimes that might not be the case. Usually, um, if you ask a client, especially if you're doing weddings, if you ask a client and say, hey, do you want your gallery to be password protected or is it okay being public? Um, Sometimes you'll get some clients to say, oh, I don't mind it being public, that's fine. And if that's the case, then um, you can go in and do keywording on all of that gallery and leave it public. And then they, that's another page that's seen as part of your website to help give you some traffic and all of that good stuff. But if the gallery's locked with a password or private, then the SEO stuff doesn't really matter because Google's not even looking at it. Um, okay, great question though, Jeff, let's see. Next question I've got here says, <clears throat> Teresa White says, hi all, thanks Robert for the Google Trends info. Does it search for your country area or the whole world search when you're looking for keywords? So again, when you're on Google Trends, uh, Teresa, you can kind of change the, um, the, the, dem the dem is the demographics the right word? And sorry if I'm coughing in the microphone, you guys. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew it, Tuesday was my first day out of quarantine in 30 days. I was quarantined for 30 days. I did not have COVID, but I had a really congested cough and I couldn't get a test done uh, for a while um, just because they said I didn't meet the criteria. And so I wanted to be safe, rather safe than sorry, especially around my little ones. And so I actually was self-quarantined for almost for almost 30 days. And Tuesday was my first day out. And I still feel like I'm still fighting off that congested cough, whatever's going on. But when it comes to that Google Trends site really quick, uh, Teresa, back to your question, you can change what you're searching for. So if I go in here and I do a search for photographer, okay, right now, it is searching by default for me in the United States without adjusting anything, without changing anything. It is searching for me within the United States. I could come in here and I could do worldwide. I could go down to a specific location. And I think you can even go down to like the, where it says United States right here. And then you can actually do a specific state just like that. So you can click on that little arrow, go to the United States, and then do just a specific state. So you can get really focused in on the area that you really wanna look for good keywords for search results. It's a really powerful tool. Um, that's why I love talking about it. There's actually a link to this in the description below the video. So those of you guys who are watching now, or if you're watching the replay of this, there's a link to Google Trends down in the uh, description below as well. Okay, let me go back. Really great question though. Uh, you guys got some good questions. Keep them coming. 410 Aerial Photography and Inspection says, how did you create your keyword drop-down menu? So I think that you're talking about that on the gallery. And let me just go down here. I think you're talking about this little keyword thing right here. And I didn't have to create that. That is something that Zenfolio has created already. Um, all you have to do is make sure that you keyword your gallery and turn your keywords and captions on and then that's actually how we display it is down here. Okay, so again, you just go to that gallery, go to edit page, make sure that the uh, keywords and captions are on and then it will show that little keyword drop down thing. So going to options, page elements, caption right here and then there's categories and keywords right here as long as you set that to show that's going to show that little drop down down here that's all you have to do great question though um all right let's see next question man you guys got some awesome questions today next question david goose says can you upload straight from a nikon body if connected via a lan connection um 
I don't think so, David. I, I know we did used to, we did use, my Oklahoma just came out. We used to uh, support, what is it, iFi uploading, but I think there were some issues with that a while back, and I'm not sure a lot of people are using that technology anymore anyway, so I know that that support has gone away. Um, I don't think that Nikons have a, I've never used that before, but I don't think that they have a browser where you can actually go and log in. So you would have to be logged in. Now, am I saying that it's not possible? No, I'm not saying that it's not possible. I'm saying that Zenfolio doesn't have anything set up. And as far as I know, natively, Nikon doesn't have anything set up that would make that work. However, there are lots of very smart people out there who could probably figure something out to make that work. And if they do, they should let us know. Okay, uh, next question. Paul, uh, I'm not going to try to take a stab at your last name. I will really mess it up, and then you'll have to just make fun of me in chat. Paul says, will the pictures show up in Google Image Search? Can they be downloaded? So, great question. If you allow Google to index your page, if you have categories and keywords and all of that stuff, yes, that stuff's going to show up in search results. Um, however, all of your images are right pr click protected. So nobody can just right click on them and save and download them. Um, I'm sure if you've gone through Google search, you've come across some images that will not allow you to save, right click and save. That's the same thing on Zenfolio. All of your images are right click, save, protected. Now you can enable downloading and all that stuff, um, but that will not be, um, it will not be able to download. All right, uh, let's see. Great questions, you guys. 14 minutes left. Next question here from M English says, is it beneficial to use galleries and groups as compared to just collections? So um, I will almost always, always, uh, I, I'm guessing that's Michael, uh, unless you want me to refer to you as M, like the real Slim Shady, but um, M, so... I will almost always recommend to never use collections. The reason that I say never use collections is because collections cause a really big mess really quickly if you don't 100% know um, how they work. What collections do is they allow you to show images that exist in different galleries all in a single space. Now, the problem with that is that if you have different settings applied in those different galleries, let's say one gallery has a password, one gallery has a um, a different password, one gallery has download settings turned on, one gallery has uh, a price list, all of the different settings that your galleries can potentially have. If you're taking images from there and putting them into a collection, guess what happens in that collection? All of those settings from those different galleries follow that image into that collection okay and so now you have a place where you're showing images that each image potentially has different settings and you can't actually change them within the collection so now maybe you create a collection maybe you've got some images from some password protected galleries from some private galleries and then you send that link out and then you have somebody contact you and they say hey i was looking at this and there's like some images that i can't click on that i can't see some of them are downloadable some of them aren't um and so um it causes some issues really quick that way. Uh, so that's why I don't recommend it. And then the other thing is, is, is that let's say that you build a collection and you know how to set it up, you know how to do it right. You've got images from galleries that all have the same settings added into that collection. But somewhere down the road, you decide to start archiving things and taking, you know, making some galleries private or, or deleting some galleries or changing some settings or anything like that. Then, all of a sudden those changes are now going to affect that collection and it doesn't really dawn on you to think about, oh, well, some of the images in this gallery might be in a collection, so I need to make sure that, you know, that collection is okay and I didn't mess it up. So that's another thing that happens with collections is that, um, you know, later on down the road, if you change things to the galleries where those images originate, it's going to reflect in that collection and could cause problems there as well. So. I will almost always recommend not to use a collection. Usually what I'll say to do is just create a new gallery, copy your images into that new gallery. That way you have full control over your images inside of that gallery rather than using a collection. That way, if you delete that gallery later on, if you change something, you have that image still existing in that copied gallery where you can actually manually go in and manipulate the information if you need to. 
So that's why I say that. Great question though. All right, uh, we got 11 minutes left. I can take a lot more questions. We've got some more questions to go, but Jennifer says, any SEO tips on how to get a page or gallery to rank higher on Google? Some of my blog posts rank better than my pages and galleries. So that question, Jennifer, will kind of answer itself. A lot of times blog posts have more text, Im more text information than galleries. So if you think about comparing your blog posts to your galleries, look at the type of information that you're putting in your blog posts versus your galleries. A lot of times, especially if we haven't done a really good gallery title, a good gallery caption, our keywords, and all of that stuff. A lot of times in a gallery, if you haven't done those things, there's like zero information, right? There's a bunch of images and that's it. Versus on a blog post, you've got some images, you've got some text in between there. And so that's probably why you're seeing that difference. So my best tip to you would be to first make sure that you're doing the key, the title, the, um, the title of the gallery, the categories, the keywords, all of that good stuff, the caption and all of that information, and um, make sure that it's all set to show, and that should start helping your galleries rank higher. So making sure that you have that information in there and looking at your alt tags and all of that stuff. Basically all of the stuff that we just talked about should help your gallery start ranking better. Because again, just organically, when we think about blog posts, you think about how much more text information typically goes into a, um, blog post versus the text information that we put into a gallery. And that's really going to be where it boils down to is making sure that you add more text information to your galleries by using the captions and all that stuff. Great question though. All right. Uh, let's see. Next question. Sharks408 says, is it possible to reschedule a um, photo shoot with the book me feature? So that's a great question. Um, if you as the photographer would like to reschedule a session, it is possible for you to do. However, the client cannot do it on their own. So if a client schedules a photo session with you and um, they want to cancel, they would need to contact you actually to go in and reschedule that. So great question there. Let's see. Next question I got here. Guys, we got like eight more minutes. So if you have any more questions, you do have a few more minutes to get those questions in the chat so Richard can get those passed over to me. Next question. This is says, this says, how do you create a custom page that you can serve as a homepage? For example, if you want to have your contact information on the homepage to be able to get contact info for future marketing efforts. So that's a great question. You can definitely create your own custom homepage if you want. Um, so what you can do, if you want to do that, you just need to go to website, go to custom pages, go in and create some kind of custom homepage, set it up how you want to look. Now, custom pages can be fun. There's lots of cool things that you can do with custom pages. They're also custom pages. So basically when you hit this create new, we're giving you a blank slate to work with. If you know some coding, you can hit source and do some coding in here. We can't offer any technical assistance. We will do our best to help you. But at the end of the day, if that custom coding is not working, chances are we'll just say, hey, I'm sorry, this is custom code that we can't help you with. But you can come in here and build out a custom page uh, as a homepage if you want, set it all up. Once you have that page completed and saved, then if you hover over your name in the top right corner, click on account, and then you're going to go down here to website right here. And then you're going to go to home page and you can actually say, you know what? I want to use a home page hosted, uh, a home page on my custom or my custom page as a home page right here. Right here, you go here and you'll see a list of all of your custom pages that you've created. You just select that and then you hit save. Okay, and that's how you can use a custom page as your home page. Now, when you do that, it does make some things a little different. For instance, when you set up that custom page to be your home page, you can no longer access customized view by clicking on customized website. You have to click on a gallery, preview it, and then open that gallery up and customize website. So just some things to be aware of if you're gonna do that. All right, uh, next question. I want to use an about video on my site. How can I add this? I'm, have tr I'm having trouble 
uploading an about video and uploading a video to the about page. Great question. So um, right now the built-in about page does not support um, uploading videos to it. Sorry, I was getting sidetracked. There was something blinking over here that was driving me crazy. Um, right now the, uh, the built-in about page does not support video. So what I would recommend that you do is create a custom about page. Uh, okay, so what you wanna do is get an about video set up. You can upload it into your Zenfolio account if you want. You can upload it to YouTube, which is what I would do because any content that you upload to YouTube, as long as you're titling it, putting in a description, YouTube is like the number two search engine in the world right now under Google. And so any content that you upload to YouTube with links to your website and stuff actually will act as SEO drivers sending traffic to your site. So for video stuff like your about video, I would create a YouTube channel, get it uploaded there, title it, caption it, keyword it, all of that good stuff. And then once you have that done, you can get the embed code from YouTube and then you can actually embed a video right into the about page. So if I go to YouTube really quick, um, let's just go to youtube.com forward slash Zenfolio live. I would say it's Zenfolio forward slash live. I got to remember the link. There we go. That should take me to the current live stream that's going on. I'll probably see myself. It'll be a little weird, but I can go here and then um, I can make myself be quiet, but I can go down to share, grab the embed code right here, copy this code. If I don't want to show the controls, I can turn the controls off, copy it, jump into a custom page. So website, custom pages, add a new page. And then once I'm here, I can say about, come down here, and then I'm going to click source, paste in the embed code like this, uncheck that, center this up, and then save and preview. And now I've created a custom page with a video. So now I would have my about video here, right? And then I would just have to link to that custom page from my site menu. So I would just say, uh, just to show you really quick, go to edit page. And then I could go to add a new site menu item, type in about, hit enter, link that site menu item to a built-in or custom page, go down here, Go to custom pages. You guys can't see it. Maybe I can let you guys see it. Let's see. There we go. Go to custom pages. Here's my about page. Update. And then wrong direction. Fix that. There we go. And so now that new about link that I just added here is now going to link to that custom about page. All right. So just going right here. Now if I, if I publish this. And then if I go to my home really quick and I click on about, man, my site is running slow. Here we go. Not my site, my internet. There we go. Hit about. It goes to that custom about page with the video on it right here. So that's how you do that. Great question though. All right, let's see. Let me go back. I think I can get one more question in, maybe two. Let's see. Next question. Paul says, do you know if there are other factors used for searches with Siri, like Alexa, hey Google? That is a good question, uh, Paul. I have not researched that yet, um, but now that you bring that up, I will definitely research that. I haven't specifically looked into Siri, Alexa, uh, Google search results as far as using voice activated assistance like that. So I'm not sure if there's any key tags or anything that you need to use for that. It is definitely a good question that I will look up and see if I can find some information about. Maybe we can talk about it on an upcoming Zenfolio Live when I have some definitive answer. But thanks for bringing that question up. That's a really good question. All right, last question. Let's see here. Last question is from David Goose. He says, once you've added keywords and descriptions to a gallery or a photo, how long before they start to be seen online? That is all dependent upon Google and how often Google indexes your site. So you can request Google to do a recrawl of your site. That will make them show up faster. Otherwise, they just periodically crawl everything. Um, 
And I don't have time to explain how to do that, but again, that all depends on Google. So you can actually just do a quick search. How do I get Google to recrawl my site? That information should pretty much be available to you there online. Great question though, David. Uh, really, really good question. All right, uh, unfortunately you guys, I am out of time. I do want to say thank you so much to all of you guys who jumped on here and hung out with me today. Lots of really, really good questions. I am so grateful for you guys. Uh, let's see. We have Paul, David, Lynn, Roxanne. Who else do we have? Jennifer, 410 Aerial Photography, Teresa White, Marietta, Jeff Cable, M English. Uh, let's see. Anybody that I missed? Maria Thompson, Ian Oliver. M Oliver hooking himself up with that credit too. Nice job there, Ian. Um, Cecile Gambin, Free Will Photos. Anybody else that I missed? And Say Cheese Photography. Let's see. I think that covers just about it. And Ian Vaughn Photography. All of you guys who hung out with me today. Again, I'm so grateful. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Make sure that you guys go back and you put these tips into play. You get some more traffic to your site. Um, don't forget Tuesdays, we do Site Review Tuesdays. You can actually go and submit your site to be reviewed every Tuesday, same time as Zenfolio Live. Come join us there, it's a lot of fun. We see a lot of really beautiful images and a lot of really cool websites that you guys have done. So it's a great place to come learn about Zenfolio and see the different options that are available and what people are doing with their site. Um, so make sure that you join us for that. And then again, don't forget you guys, coming up next week on Zenfolio Live, new features for Book Me. I think you guys are gonna be excited about it. I'm gonna have that special guest, so we're gonna be talking about that. So make sure that you join us for that. And then, hey you guys, this weekend, be safe. Uh, have a good weekend. Do something that brings you some joy. Do something that brings you some peace, but make sure that you're also doing that for other people, that you're lifting people, other people up, that you're encouraging other people, and that we're all working together to make this world a great place. See you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend and a safe weekend.